I'd like to every, ask everyone to uh, find a seat. We're going to get started. So good morning, everyone. My name is Tom Chow, and I'm the Vice President of Research here at Holland Bloorview Kids Rehabilitation Hospital. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all of our guests uh, this morning. Uh, before we get into the formalities, I'd like to acknowledge the sacred land that Holland Bloorview operates on which has been the site of human activity for thousands of years. This land is a territory of the Huron-Wendat and Petun First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Today, Toronto is also the home to indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island, which was the name given to our continent in Ojibwe and Haudenosaunee oral traditions. The turtle features prominently in creation stories, mainly of indigenous peoples uh, from northeastern part of North America. The turtle is said to support the world and is an icon of life. On a beautiful, sunny uh, winter morning like today, as we look out over the snow-covered ravine, we are especially grateful to have the opportunity to work on this important traditional territory. Holland Blurview creates a world of possibility by supporting children and youth living with disability, medical complexity, illness, and injury. We are a leader in helping young people with disabilities and their families build resilience and achieve a world of boundless possibilities. Our research, inventions, and evidence-informed practice impacts the lives of children and youth around the globe. We see approximately 7,500 families annually, representing over 2,000 unique diagnoses, including a wide range of physical, neurodevelopmental, and intellectual disabilities including autism spectrum disorder, cerebral palsy, ADHD, spina bifida, and acquired brain injury. We are entering the third year of our No Boundary Strategic Plan. Our vision is to enable all children and families to have the most meaningful and healthy futures by personalizing pathways, discovering for action, and connecting the system. The Blurview Research Institute and Holland Blurview is internationally recognized for its scientific leadership in improving the lives of children and disabilities with their, and their families. We ascribe to a special kind of science here at Holland Blurview, research that is client and family centered. Last year, we announced our 25 million fundraising campaign to expand the Blurview Research Institute, which includes the addition of Ontario's first child-friendly, fully accessible MRI plans are currently underway to realize this project. The expansion of the Research Institute comes at a crucial time. For over a decade, we've been developing breakthroughs and revolutionary advances in our understanding of childhood disability. These advances have impacted families not only here at Holland Blurview, but across the world. As the impact of our research grows, so does the need for our talent pool and physical space. A critical aspect of that growth is the strengthening of our industry partnerships. Today presents a unique opportunity to showcase a partnership with Komodo Open Lab. Komodo are the creators of Tecla E, an innovative made in Ontario technology that you will be hearing about shortly. Tecla E was first conceptualized and developed eight years ago out of a need for a health technology solution that can foster independence for individuals with disability across different physical settings devices and activities. Individuals with long-term and severe physical disabilities often experience challenging controlling aspects of their daily life, such as personal finances, manipulating their physical environment, which are critical to social and mental health. Without some degree of independence, we know that mental health is at risk and that individuals experience social isolation and declining health status. Many young people with severe motor disabilities often cannot access touchscreen-based mobile devices and are therefore excluded from the benefits of current technologies, uh, thereby contributing to further health disparities. Tecla E aims to address these pressing health concerns by allowing individuals with disability to take control of their environment across multiple digital platforms, including the desktop, tablets, and smartphones, physical settings such as home and community, and functional domains. Tecla E works wirelessly and can control up to eight Bluetooth compatible devices. It can be controlled through a variety of accessible technologies and be integrated into a power wheelchair. You will be learning more about uh, this technology from Maurizio 
Meza, inventor of Tecla E and co-founder of Komodo Open Lab, and Greg Contaxis, a volunteer of Holland Burview, who will provide a demonstration. Together with Komodo Open Lab, our next steps are to implement Tecla E in the home environment of children and youth with severe disabilities. We are specifically targeting a pediatric population given the current youth demographic, otherwise known as Generation Z. This is the first uh, group of young people to grow up in a wired and online world. Thank you to the Health Innovation and Strategies Branch at the Ontario Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care and the Ontario Centers of Excellence for granting us the opportunity to realize the vision of Tecla E. I'd also like to acknowledge our partners on this project, including the John McGivney Children's Centre in Windsor, Ontario, the University of Toronto, Canchild at McMaster University, and Bell Canada. And of course, all of our families for their time and invaluable help towards creating life-changing solutions. To begin the official part of this event, I would like to invite Jonathan Sachs, Health Service Provider Lead at the Health Innovation and Strategies Branch of the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care to come up on stage to provide a few remarks. Jonathan? Thanks, Tom. Uh, so just before my prepared remarks, one thing I want to mention, I was talking to some people before, uh, just over coffee, uh, you know, there's a lot of HTF projects, about 25 of them being funded right now in the province, and one of the reasons I'm so excited about this project is that many of those, when we talk about innovation and barriers to innovation, all those are focused on IT connectivity and software sharing and information sharing between hospitals and home care agencies, um, which is all very, very good. But I think this project is a great exemplar and one of the strong, strongest examples of uh, that patient focus and such having the, the focus on quality of life and the direct impact we're going to see uh, is so tangible here. So really, really excited to see, see more, learn more. Um, and it keeps reminding us of the ministry and, and all of us around the table uh, of the importance of, of patients at the end of the day and, and helping them uh, go about their daily lives. So uh, thanks again, Tom, for the kind welcome. Um, thank you to everybody who's uh, here to support this project today, especially all of those of you who have worked so hard to turn this project from an idea into action. Uh, we know that innovation is at the center of a sustainable healthcare system and better patient care. And that's why we created the Health Technologies Fund. This program, the HTF program, fosters partnerships between health service providers, patients, academia, and industry to drive meaningful change in our system. And we're thrilled that the fund so far has supported 26 unique projects uh, and 26 innovative healthcare technologies with over $10.5 million of government funding to date. So uh, specifically, I want to call out Holland Bloorview, uh, Komodo Open Labs, uh, the John McGivney Children's Center, U of T, and the other project partners uh, on winning this grant and taking this project to the next level. One other reminder, uh, for round two of HTF, which was uh, the round in which this project was funded, we had over 70 applications and only 11 projects were chosen. So uh, it was a highly competitive process. It's not very easy to get this money, so it speaks to the strength of the team uh, and the quality of the project in terms of their ability to, to secure that funding. And um, the positive results don't just stop there. So through two rounds of the HTF so far, we've seen very encouraging outcomes. And I'm excited to share just some examples with all of you today. So thus far, across two rounds of HTF, we've had over 12,000 patients participating in HTF projects, which is way beyond any of our expectations. Uh, these projects, then through this funding, we've seen the creation and retention of over 200 jobs in the province of Ontario in both the public and private sectors. Um, for the companies and the industry partners that have been involved in HTF projects, they've had over a million and a half dollars of incremental sales, so sales following the grants they received from us, which is great. Um, in addition, those companies have received over $4 million in follow-on investments, whether it's from other public partners, from venture capital or other sources, which is also fantastic which are, so those are really, really incredible results. So uh, thank you again to everybody for having us. Uh, we're excited to hear from the team today and to see their uh, innovation in action. And I'm not sure who's next. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, and thank you to the ministry for that vote of confidence. Hopefully we'll be able to contribute to those amazing statistics. I would now like to ask uh, Jennifer Moles, Innovation Procurement Manager at the Ontario Centers of Excellence, to come up and give a few remarks. 
I know, I've known Jennifer uh, for many years since the days that the, when the Ontario um, uh, Rehabilitation Technology Consortium was housed here at Holland Blurview. So Jennifer? Thanks for having us this morning, and this is great. We're very excited about this particular project. And, you know, as Tom indicated, I actually started my career in healthcare 18 years ago, almost to this day, at Blurview. So it's kind of, kind of fun, a little exciting. Um, so I just want to say again, I'm Jennifer Moles, Innovation Procurement Manager at the Ontario Centers of Excellence. And um, I'm responsible for management of the Health Technologies Fund. So I work very closely with Jonathan on a regular basis, and we uh, you know, ensure that the process is fair and transparent, and we work with the community to specifically uh, you know, facilitate applications within this particular program, and then to monitor these initiatives uh, for the lifetime of the project, and then uh, typically one to two years even post-project, just to continue collecting outcomes that have been achieved from these initiatives. So this project in particular, uh, sheds light on what it means to facilitate independence with individuals with uh, severe physical impairment. Tecla E is being demonstrated today, so that's going to be very exciting. Um, and it's a solution that helps to remove barriers from individuals across physical, dis physical settings, different devices, and activities to daily living. So I think the demonstration here is probably going to, you know, uh, explain everything today and, uh, uh, you know, really intrigue everyone. Um, again, I want to thank everybody as a part of this project. Um, it takes a lot of organizations and individuals to participate in these initiatives to specifically, you know, help with the success. So again, Holland Blurview Kids Rehab Hospital, Komodo Open Lab, John McGilvery Children's Center, and the University of Toronto. Um, and in closing, I want to say that OCE is very pleased to continue working on this uh, with these particular project teams uh, to monitor and to provide support and see what the future holds in the Ontario health system. Thank you, Jennifer. I would now like to ask Maurizio Meza, co-founder and CEO of Komodo Open Lab, to give an overview of Tecla E. As a bit of background, we first conducted uh, beta testing in collaboration with the Access Technology Clinic here at Holland Blurview back in 2011 and 2012. I actually didn't know that. And uh, Komodo Open Lab co-founder Jorge Silva completed his graduate studies here at Holland Blurview. So a lot of connections dating many years back. Uh, through Jennifer, we were introduced to the Ontario Centers of Excellence Health Technology Fund. And, uh, and again, we're grateful for this program uh, and the opportunity to work together with Komodo. So, Maurizio. Thank you, Tom. Uh, so, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Mauricio Mesa, co-founder of Komodo Open Lab. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background of uh, our company, uh, um, I'm a co-founder along with Jorge Silva. As Tom mentioned, Jorge completed his PhD in biomedical engineering here at uh, Holland Blurview at the University of Toronto. And I work as an assistive technology consultant next door at uh, Toronto Rehab for a number of years before we founded the company. And the company was based on the need that we saw of uh, people with uh, limited mobility to want to get access to mobile uh, devices. Uh, working as an assistive technology consultant next door, one of the common requests that uh, we had as, as I was leaving that position is like, well, the iPhone is great. Why cannot I have access to that? Uh, so that's, that's kind of what has uh, drove the development and, and uh, what uh, the company does. Um, so uh, everyone here probably is using a smartphone. Um, they know like how has changed uh, from 10 years to now, how we consume products and services. No matter where we are, we have access to information. But unfortunately, that uh, hasn't uh, reached everyone. Like for someone that cannot use a touch screen, that has difficulty with small buttons, they have not been able to, to gain access to those services. Uh, instead, they had to rely on very expensive, dedicated assistive devices that um, are very hard to use. They break often. Um, so that's what we've been trying to, to solve. I'm going to play a short video to give you an idea of how the technology works um, and some user uh, uh, 
testimonials and then uh, I'll explain a little bit more in detail how the device works. What did you do this morning after you had your morning coffee? If you live in the 21st century, you probably checked your phone or your email. Well, so did Carolyn, but she checked her email using Tecla. Tecla is a device that allows those with limited mobility to access their devices hands-free. Tecla E works with standard ability switches to control touch-based devices. These switches include light touch buttons, sip and puff, proximity switches, and the driving controls of a wheelchair like joysticks and head raise. Tecla E gives the user independent control of multiple devices like smartphones, tablets, computers, and smart home technology. Tecla E can connect and control eight devices. And aside from simple phone calls and texting, with access and control of internet-enabled appliances, you can open doors, control your TV, change the temperature, adjust the lighting, even arm your alarm system. Best of all, Tecla is as mobile as you are and has 48 hours of continued use. Tecla E also allows your loved ones to see your location and even the temperature around you. What all this means for its users is a new sense of freedom. It is a big deal getting Tecla with being connected to technology. There's so much that I can do independently, like even if it's little, like, I don't know, banking. Tecla is like one of the single most important technologies in my life. Tecla is, a, is in my opinion, is a restoration device. It's restored me. Dignity, independence, privilege. That's pretty radical that a device could do something like that. And that's partly why I think it should be shared around the world. Learn more at www.gettechla.com. Um, so to explain you more the impact of Tecla, I'm going to introduce you to one of our users. Um, the kid you see on the screen, his name is Christopher. He's in Australia. And this is a screenshot of a video he made, and that's how we got to know him. He made a video that he uh, posted on YouTube called Why Touchscreen Scares Me. And the reason for that is he has cerebral palsy, and as, as you see, he's able to make a video. When he was at home in front of his desktop computer, he was able to access technology, he was able to do many things. But the moment that uh, computer was not in front of him, he didn't have any access to technology. And in this video, he explains how uh, scared he is that he's seeing that all the development is going into touchscreen devices that he cannot use. So that's why he said uh, that touchscreen scared him. When we saw that video, uh, we sent him one of the early units we had. Uh, we talked to him, we tried to set him up, and then uh, we didn't hear much from here until uh, we saw that his mom tweeted something. Uh, so that was the first tweet we saw after he started using the device. So for the first time, he was able to use a mobile phone independently. Uh, so for that, uh, that for the family was huge because now it didn't matter where he was, they would be able to uh, reach him and he would be able to let them know if he needed help, if he was ready to be picked up. So that had a big impact on the family dynamics. Now I'm gonna uh, show you a next image. And as I mentioned, he makes video, uh, he used to make these YouTube videos, but now he's making movies. And this is a, a very strange photo, uh, but it's very cool because he's making movies that he's acting, he's playing the Joker, and if you have a chance, look for Christopher Hills on YouTube. He makes these really, really interesting movies. This movie, he's the Joker, and he actually kills his dad in an explosion. But what is really cool is that he's filming the movie as well he's acting. He's using drones that he can control through his phone to be filming. He also does all the video editing uh, from his computer. Uh, and that's all because now he has access to all these different devices. He can use drones. Uh, he has a smart home that he can control from his phone as well. He doesn't use a dedicated uh, communication device. He uses an iPhone where he just types uh, text and then he asks the iPhone to speak it out loud. So he doesn't need to have 
those clunky machines like the one that Stephen Hawking used to have. He can use that from all mainstream technology. Um, so it's just to show the impact that having access to the same technology that everyone else has. Uh, now he runs a film editing business, uh, so he's self-employed, and he keeps making movies. Uh, so for some other users, as, you meant, as we saw before, for Carolyn was being able to use the same technology that all her peers were using. Uh, one of the things that Carolyn mentioned to us, it was like how big of a difference was when she was able to text. Because all her friends, uh, that's how they communicate. And she wasn't able to communicate in the same way as, as them. And for Todd, the most important part of using Tecla and the access he gained is that he was the person communicating. Prior to that, he needed uh, an attendant to, be, to type to his wife and kind of being the middle person on that communication. But now he's able to do that himself. Um, so how the device works? So we match whatever the user's abilities are. So if someone has a limited hand or arm function, if uh, the user can blink, and then we match them to the technology they want to use. So smartphone, tablets, uh, smart home devices, TVs. So the device kind of sits in the middle. It's a, it's a wireless device. Um, so uh, it's, as we mentioned, it can be used with different kind of switches. It can be integrated into a wheelchair. It can be through other uh, interfaces that are accessible. Uh, joysticks, head controls, zip and puff controllers. And then it's a wireless device. So we communicate via Bluetooth to phones, tablets, computers. It's an internet-enabled device, so it integrates with smart home systems uh, like Alexa, IFTTT, Harmony Controller, so all the devices we are using now at home uh, for home automation are available. Uh, as well as the device has uh, different sensors that can help uh, families and caregivers have a bit more information of what's going on with the user. They can know where they are, what are the conditions around them, like temperature, light conditions, uh, so that's how the device works. And just to give you an overview of, of where we are, um, so there are, like the competitor products are usually single function devices. So if you want to use one phone, one tablet, but they don't allow you to move from one device to another, that's a big feature for the user. Uh, other devices, for example, driving controls, sometimes have uh, connectivity to devices. But that restricts the user to being on the chair to access technology. With Tecla, they can um, move as they move from being on bed, being on a manual wheelchair, being on a power wheelchair, but still have access to their devices. Um, and it's not restricted to just uh, a software-based uh, product like uh, some other competitors. Um, so just uh, as kind of a summary of, of how the device works, it's a device that can connect to multiple devices, so allows the user to switch from their phone to their tablet, to their Apple TV device, to turning a light on. It integrates with the same technology that the rest of the family can be using, the Philips light bulbs, uh, Wi-Fi thermostats, wall plugs that can be controlled. Um, can also be portable, so depending on the environment of the user, uh, it can go with them. Um, and now uh, I'm gonna invite Greg to come to the stage. Greg is a contact, he's a volunteer here at Blurview. He's been a volunteer for 21 years. Uh, he's a movie fan, and he also likes to uh, access the news a lot. Uh, so uh, Greg has been uh, working with us this week and he's just had a few hours of experience with Tecla, but you'll see that um, he's gonna be helping us show how he's gonna be able to access a phone. He currently doesn't access a, a smart a cell phone, so this is something um, that is new for Greg. Uh, we'll be using an iPad and connecting it to a, a smart home device. So um, thanks, Greg, for helping us. Thank you very much.
they come? Can they go there? Yes. Can you move the switch? Which the, the red one. Closer. Thank you. Okay, so um, Greg is actually using the same kind of switches that he uses to control other things. So the switches that we use are industry standard, so they've been in the market for a number of years. Uh, so for most users, they would already know how to use a switch uh, for something like controlling maybe a, an old style remote control, um, for some wheelchair function that uh, they might be also using a switch. In this case, uh, Gray has two switches. Uh, one, it's connected to a, directly to a, a light uh, that I have here that by just uh, pressing it, he can turn it on. And the tech light is connected to both devices, a phone that it's mounted on uh, Greg's chair and an iPad here. So right now, uh, Greg, it's on the iPad on the internet with the switch. So if you press and hold uh, Greg, that's going to take him out of that app. And he's back to his home screen. And he's going to open the TSN uh, app. So now uh, Greg is going to find the scores for the hockey last night. <laughs> that's my favorite sport. They are. Yep. That's really are. One thing. Awesome. Okay. Now press again to get out of the app. So now Gray has switched from being on his uh, iPad, as you see on top of the device, says switch control device not found. That means the device has disconnected. Now he's connected to the phone that's mounted on his chair. And when he presses the switch, he's back on his. I did press the switch. Yeah, let me see. We're having a bit of a technical difficulty right now. I press the button. Yeah, let's see. Good old technology. Greg is going to use the iPhone to uh, make a phone call. So press the switch. And then wait. So now my phone is going to ring. So if you can turn the speaker phone. So my phone is ringing. Hey, Greg. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> What's I'm going on? I'm going to hang up. Okay. Uh, so now, uh, Greg is just going to press one of the other accessible switches to turn the light on. Oh. There, we yeah. there you go. So we use the, it, the 
the smart home integration uses the internet, so there's a little bit of a delay. That's why uh, it turned on and off, as Greg pressed a couple of times, uh, the light uh, turned on. But um, kind of the idea behind that feature is that um, for people that are not necessarily familiar with a phone, with a tablet, and the multiple apps required to control multiple devices, that those functions can be integrated into uh, simple interfaces. So in this case, it's a switch. For some of their users, is their driving controls of their chair. So from the same joystick they drive, they can turn the light on and off, or maybe turn their TV on and off. Uh, but uh, there's also a companion app that goes with the Tecla E that allows people to create a custom remote control that integrates with all the services I mentioned before, as well as allow the user to connect, to create the speed dials, templates for email or text messages, uh, and controlling some device functions like launching some apps uh, or changing the volume of the device. Uh, so that's all for the demo. Uh, thanks, Greg. Thank you very much. And now we're going to pass it back to Tom. So thank you, Greg and Maurizio, for demonstrating the Tecla E. You can now understand why we're so excited to be working with a Komodo Open Lab. This is technology that really has transformational uh, potential. So I'd like to now open up the floor for any questions. So Maurizio and, and Greg are here at the front. Do you have any questions about the technology or the user experience? I'm sure Maurizio or Greg would be happy to uh, entertain. Uh, the device, it's uh, around $650. Uh, yes, uh, the previous version of the hardware device, it's covered under ADP. Uh, right now, I think we're working with a couple of the clinics that are going to evaluate it and then submit, submit for, for assessment. So the goal is face-to-face, -face, right? Not the phone uh, Yeah, so ADP doesn't provide uh, funding for phones, so it's mostly for uh, access to a communication device. When someone is using like an iPad uh, as their communication device, they can have access to Tecla. Uh, because of this device has other capabilities, like you can control phone uh, computers as well, that probably, that's another avenue to get it under ADP with this version. I like the skin scanning speed because it's more quicker than I'm used to. Uh, so the device, it's um, wireless, so it has a Bluetooth connection, it has a Wi-Fi connection, it actually has a cell modem, so it can connect to wireless networks. It doesn't have infrared capabilities uh, on its own. Uh, for those users that want to control a TV that's not a smart TV or a stereo, uh, it works with standard um, infrared interfaces like Harmony. Uh, there's another device called SwitchBot that allows you to control those kind of devices. And it's fairly inexpensive for less than $100. You can, with that device, you can control all the devices, like cable boxes, things like that. Okay. Great. Well, thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us uh, this morning. And uh, again, just want to reiterate our appreciation to the Ontario Centers of Excellence for their support in the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care for their vote of confidence in uh, innovative health technology. We encourage you to uh, enjoy some light refreshments and networking. So thank you again, everyone.